Don in London, hello, it's uh, January the 16th, 2009. This month seems to be rattling along quite quickly, and uh, when we have busy lives, it's very hard to recognise just how time passes. But in the past, I can remember long, long days of uh, being abjectly unhappy because I was uh, yet to be somebody in recovery from addiction. And my videos are all about recovery from addiction to substance and behaviour. My substance was alcohol, my behaviour, trying to be perfect in all areas of life and never getting quite to be anything but an ordinary human being, doing the best he could. And uh, in, a, in and amongst that, drink took me over and uh, the addiction was complete. It was 100% addicted to alcohol. I don't know when the crossing over line was, does it matter? Not so much these days, but uh, to understand the pathology of uh, any addiction it's probably wise to understand that if we keep on topping ourselves up with something which takes the edge off life or makes us feel fixed in a way which is unnatural then we're probably having a, a bit of a problem with dependence and I go to AA, that's Alcoholics Anonymous which is uh, a fellowship of men and women who uh, only have one reason for meeting up and that's a desire to stop drinking and I'll just share the preamble which is said at every meeting of AA and probably the, every meeting of uh, uh, any anonymous fellowship this is it, preamble, available on a little card from uh, any AA meeting who has the, the literature out or freely available on the internet if you go look for it and it says this Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking there are no dues or fees for AA membership we are self-supporting through our own contributions AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution does not wish to engage in any controversy neither endorses nor opposes any causes our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety and the reason why I say that at pretty much the beginning of every video is because it's said at every meeting and it sort of calms us down to be into the moment of now to focus on what is happening now rather than the thinking about well I've got here just in time and I might have to leave early I might have to do this, that or the other it's about calming down into the present moment which is a, a spiritual connection for me and I said earlier in the week I would talk about how it works January being the, uh, the first month of any year and the, the first step of a 12 step program in one of the books, this one here, The Daily Reflections, it has readings which are pertinent to it, each step of the action program of AA. And step one is, uh, it talks about the powerlessness we have over alcohol and life being unmanageable when we take a drink. And I'll, it'll be part of this reading here from how it works. Uh, there's a helpline there for UK, 0845 769 5 and then you can talk to somebody direct about how AA may be able to help you or if you're just stuck so that phone number is in any telephone book or can be got from directory inquiries and uh, it's worth a call just to see what it's like right so how it works and this is from chapter 5 of the big book and I found out what, why it's called the Big Book of AA. It's because in the 1930s, in, in the Depression, paper was very, very hard to get hold of at any price. So it was made out of um, a rag quality, which meant that the Big Book wasn't just that thick. It was about that thick. It was really huge. Didn't mean it was any bigger or better, but that's how it got to be the Big Book. How it works. Rarely have we seen a person fail who has thoroughly followed our path those who do not recover are people who cannot or will not completely give themselves to this sim simple program and I didn't in the beginning so I kept on relapsing usually men and women who are constitutionally incapable of being honest with themselves and in addiction I was dishonest with myself and others there are such unfortunates they are not at fault they seem to have been born that way they are not naturally incapable of grasping they are naturally incapable of grasping and developing a manner of living which demands rigorous honesty. Their chances are less than average. There are those too who suffer from grave emotional and mental disorders, but many of them do recover if they have the capacity to be honest. And my grave mental disorder is clinical depression. And uh, I think they might have been thinking of other grave mental disorders in the 
vernacular of the day. It's, uh, it's about being honest with ourselves, and that's the starting point, how to get honest and admit and accept being powerless over alcohol. It goes on to say, Our stories disclose in a general way that we, what we used to be like, what happened and what we are like now. If you have decided you want what we have and are willing to go to any length to get it, then you are ready to take certain steps. At some of these we balked. We thought we could find an easier, softer way, but we could not. With all the earnestness at our command, we beg of you to be fearless and thorough from the very start. Some of us have tried to hold on to our old ideas, and the result was nil until we let go absolutely. Remember that we, are de we deal with alcohol, cunning, baffling, powerful. Without help it is too much for us, but there is one who has all power. That one is God. May you find him now. And I'm still finding God elusive in my life, but I have got good conscience and the wisdom of the experience of people in the rooms of AA to help me make good decisions on a daily basis. So it's about the spiritual connection for me to truth. Half measures availed us nothing, and that's about rigorous honesty. We stood at the turning point. We asked his protection and care with complete abandon. And I do ask for protection and care with complete abandon from my fellows who are working to the good conscience they have. Here are the steps we took which are suggested as a program of recovery. We admitted we were powerless over alcohol, that our lives had become unmanageable, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore, restore us to sanity, and the power greater than me is simply AA and the good conscience that prevails in most people. Made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understand him, or understood it, and it's our own perception of a God, of our understandings. So, spiritual connection, reality, good conscience, working well in most of humanity. That's how it works for me. And, you know, I'm not denigrating God in any shape or form. I believe there are many higher powers. Just look at the, the size of the universe. So, step four, made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Five, admitted to God or the universe to ourselves and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. We're entirely have, ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Humbly asked him to remove our shortcomings. So defects of character for me are put it, put, living in fear, putting on a brave face, an ego to the extreme of living. And my shortcomings in step seven are not having enough courage, faith and confidence. So courage, faith and confidence are those things which will help me more than my defects of fear, brave face and ego. But there is a balance in all these things. Eight, made a list of all people we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. Nine, made direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure, injure them or others. And we're not about going out as uh, vigilantes with truth and honesty. We're about going out there with truth and honesty and not hurting people, but also accepting our part in what happened in the past and, and making amends as we can. Ten, continue to take personal inventory, and when we were wrong, promptly admit it. That's a daily chore. Well, it's not a chore, actually. It's a daily part of life for me these days. Eleven, sought through prayer, prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him praying only for his knowledge of his will, the knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. And that's to the good of good conscience, nature, providence, the universe for me. It's not bigger or smaller than anybody else's perception of uh, powers greater than me. It's just what I've learned and understood for myself. Twelve, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we try to carry this message to alcoholics and to practice these principles in all our affairs. So it's not about, it's about practicing the principles and it's about living the steps. It's not about being a, a graduate of AA or learning the steps and be able to write, roll them off as in rote, as if we are some sort of mechanical robot. It's about making the best use of these steps in living and experiencing the steps. And we can only make them work if we have those experiences. Many of us exclaim, what an order, I can't go through with it. Do not be discouraged. No, no one among us has been able to maintain any, anything like perfect adherence to these principles. We are not saints. The point is, is that we are willing to grow along spiritual land, lines. The principles we have set down are guides to progress. We claim spiritual progress rather than spiritual perfection. And my time is up for the last paragraph. It will follow on in the next video. So more in just a few moments.